Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm going to update a video that I did a while ago about using Realm with React Native. I kind of did everything using print lines and now someone suggested, hey, let's put a UI on it. So this is the UI that I put on top of it. Before I move to the next phase, I'm going to show how I took the code from the original video, integrated into it, and okay UI, I'm not a UI guy. And then we'll start to look into how we can actually do some um, offline work with Mongo, Realm, and React Native, and start to really dig deep into the features. Took a little while for me to get to this video because I had some other stuff stacked to it, but I'm glad I finally got to it. This is not going to be a type and watch me code. This is going to be more of, I've coded it already. Here's how I did it. Here's the source code, reference source code with video to make sense in your mind. Okay, so if this is something you find enjoyable, please make sure you like, please make sure you share, and please make sure you subscribe. Now let's see if we can get to the code. Let's see if I can make this little picture guy smaller. Okay. So here's the application. As you remember before, what it allowed us to do was save some basic tasks into a Mongo Realm database. This is basically me walking through the, let's switch back. This is the original video. Um, it's called MongoDB Realm and React Native getting started. So make sure you check it out. And basically what I was doing was walking through this doc, this MongoDB documentation, and instead of just kind of reading it and copying the code, um, I'm creating a video about going through the process. And so part of, part of where we are right now is, you know, we've shown how to kind of read, write, and update, but let's kind of put some code around it. So let's go back and take a look at what we've got. So this is a React Native app. Um, so it's always good to look at package JSON to see what's kind of going on. And so if I look in my package JSON, we can see here some of the new things that I've added. And the most important thing that I've added was React Native Paper. React Native Paper is a nice kind of framework to get you started with your UI. And do I have it up here? Yes, I do. This is React Native Paper. Let me zoom it in a bit. Making your React Native apps look and feel native. It's a pretty awesome tool. I mostly use the buttons and then I use this other component this other component here called list item and, and what else did I use so I use list item I used button here and I believe the last one that I used was input let's see where's that text input I use text input and that's it and as you can see, it's not the best looking app, but it's better than just kind of a plain old app. And so what does the app do? Um, it allows me to do the thing that I showed last time. I have this local database stored. I can add a task. This is a new task. And I can determine if it's open or closed based on the checks. Let's leave this one opened. And I can add task and you see it adds it to my list and the list gets updated automatically for me. I get another task. This is a closed task. And I can check the box and I can add the task and you can see it keeps track of it. And then also I can actually start to delete the items. And then the last part, which is the um, really why you're here, is that it's actually saving it to a Realm database locally. And so if I can uh, refresh my database, let's see. I mean, re restart my app. So let's find my terminal and kind of run this guy again. So the app was built, it reloads it, and you can see my data is still there. Looks like I got some bad properties set in a key. I'll check that and make sure I clean it up before I push the code out. Um, so. That's kind of the background. Now let's look at what we did inside the code. So um, we, let's start with the FJS. So of course I followed all the instructions for installing React Native Paper. If you have any questions about that, leave a comment below and I'll go into it. And um, a couple of things, important things to remember with that is you definitely need to wrap everything inside of this provider here to get it started. There's this default, you can take the default theme, which is purple. So let me, um, you can take the default theme, which is purple, or you can kind of add your own thing. I was just playing around with it, so I did this kind of blue thing for it. And so that's how I got my default theme. But like I said, the important thing is to wrap your whole app with this paper provider, because that's how it works. 
And then what I did to keep this simple is I put everything inside of my app.js. So there's no router, there's no nothing, everything's just inside of here. Okay, so let's kind of start from the top. So as you remember last time, we need to set up our schema, I think. We need to set up our schema for our task. So we gave it a name and we have all the properties for it and we set the primary key. And, and before we were just kind of, for lack of a better word, console logging out everything here, we've kind of created a UI. And so that's what I'm going to focus on is um, let's focus, talk about these variables. So this is the instance of Realm that I get when I start up my app, which you can see right here, this Realm open my Realm task schema. And then you could see down here, this is where I keep a copy of all the tasks that I retrieve. And so what happens is in my app component, when I start up, this is a use effect and we click the link, we can go down to the end. We can see, because there are no dependencies, it's only gonna run once at startup. The next thing is that it needs to run an async block. And so instead of creating a separate app, I just kind of put this wrapper around it so that I can kind of execute this async function and inside of that function are all the things we need to do. And so what we need to do here is we need to open up my Realm instance. And so that's what's going on right here. And then we query the database to get all of the task objects that have been saved. And then here I'm setting them all into the tasks um, state variable that I have kept around. The next thing I do is I take the Realm instance and I save it. So I have access to it up here. Where did that go? I passed it right here in my set realm. And then the other thing that I do is I want to be able to listen to changes so that I can update the UI as tasks are added and removed. And so what I do is I set up this listener to update task lists when the data is updated. And so we just take this um, task objects that I got here from this realm objects task. I put a add listener on it, and anytime there's any sort of change, add, update, or delete, I'm just taking whatever tasks are and kind of setting all my tasks to match that. So that's kind of what's going on here. All right, and let's see, is there anything in here that I can be doing? I think there's probably some values I could be messing with, but I decided to just keep it simple. Um, so that's what's going on here. And so it, like you saw, when I delete, my whole list is getting updated because I'm resetting my state variable task and it's causing the whole list to be updated again. And if any errors, I throw an error. So let's look at the code, what's going on in here. Um, let's, go, let, let's finish going through the functions. So the add task we are the update and the deletes need to the writes and the deletes need to be the creation and the deletes need to be done inside of a transaction and that's what this realm dot right is it, it creates a transaction wrapper around all this so what i'm doing is i'm taking the information that i got from my one actually two state variables uh text and status which are up here and the text or responds to this and the status responds to this checkbox. And I'm taking those values in and I'm using them to create my task object. And so I'm setting text, I'm setting the status based on checked or not checked. And then I uh, just do the create. And if everything's great, no errors are thrown, I clear out my UI fields. So it's clean and then it's written. And then since we are listening for changes up here, we get this change event, I update my task with the task. So that's what happens there. Okay, the next one down here is delete. Delete's a little bit differently. I need to pass in a task object. I take the task object that I was passed, I get the ID, and then I can call this realm function object for primary key to get the task that I want to delete. And then I call realm delete on it. I clear out the task, which I'm not certain I need to do. And then I call realm refresh to kind of refresh everything. It's inside of this transaction, which it needs to be. And then the last thing is, once again, because there has been some sort of change to the tasks, um, I set my tasks again and my UI gets updated. So that's how the delete works. And then, sorry, that's how the add works. No, nope, I was right, that was delete. 
That's funny, I did them backwards because delete was first, but I did add fed has first. Okay, and then finally down into the UI here. So this is just a lot of what I find interesting working with React Native is you spend a lot of time just messing around to get your UI right. And so I'll just kind of walk through these um, kind of views that I've created. So this so this is kind of like my what view is this? This is my top level. This is this top header view. So let's put that in there. Let's no, let's call it something else. Text input view. Um, I wanted to, I don't know why my helper's not helping me put a comment around this, but that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So this is my text input view. That's where it starts. And so I'm creating this one view. The idea is create this rectangle that goes across the top of my screen and then split it into two smaller views, one for the task and then another one for this um, checkbox. And so, sorry, let me put this in the right place. I'm in the wrong place. Let's kind of move this up. All right, so this is the wrapper for the whole thing. It's set for a row, the flex direction is a row. Then I have this other view that I'm creating right here. This is the view for the task. Um, I set it to flex one, so it's gonna go all the way across and then what'll happen is the last component will just take whatever space is left and then it'll push the task. It'll push this task view over to back to the left. And so then this next one is my um, checkbox or my, uh, where I'm using my toggle button. And so I've created the, another view that wraps the toggle button and then inside of that view I have my toggle button. And then this, these are all the styles that I've created on the toggle button to kind of get it to render as I want to. There's, there's some options here. You can see I'm, I'm changing the color. So as I click on this, you can see the color of the box is changing based on the status. And that's what I'm doing here. This background color status is checked. And then the same thing with the icon. The, um, if it's checked, then I show the checked icon. If not, I don't show the checked icon. So that's what's happening there. And then that kind of wraps up that view. And then down here, this is kind of the container for the list. And so I've kind of created another view that kind of wraps the whole thing. And then I didn't use it. I didn't use an actual list here, which I probably could do for better scrolling. I just, this whole thing is just inside of a scroll view, so the whole page scrolls. And then what I do is I just take the task that I'm given and I loop through each one and I use this paper list item. I assign an ID so React doesn't complain. And then um, for the title, you can pass it raw text or you can pass it a um, React Native object component. And that's what I did. I passed it a text component. I've taken the props that were passed in by default, specifically the um, color and the font size and I assign it so that I get my theme properly for the title here. I could have done the same thing for description, but instead I, you know, you, I could have created another kind of um, function that returned a React object, but I just put the regular text in and it renders it appropriately. And then you have this kind of left and right properties. And so for, and it's the same object. I mean, it's the same concept. You can return no, uh, React op components to render. So here you can see I'm rendering the list icon over here on the left and then on the right, I'm rendering this delete object, this, this kind of trash can. And so I wrapped the trash can icon, so there's a trash can icon, I wrapped it in this pressable component, which then allows me to interact with the delete, I mean with the press on it and get the delete event, and that's how we're actually deleting the objects as they come through. And then down here on the bottom we have the style sheet. So like I said, this was a, just a short video kind of walk through how I got it cleaned up. Um, I will post the source code so you can go through the source code. And then the next video, we will actually start to dig deeper in some of the realm functionality. But this was kind of the logical next step was to get the UI done. And I didn't want to kind of merge a UI video with the next step video. So for folks who want to just skip this, you can just jump to the next video when I release it. And because you guys probably already know UI pretty good. All right, so hopefully someone found this uh, helpful. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, and bye.